friends. I hope you didn't think that when I said gone fishing, that I was really gone fishing, but that's what we're going to do tonight. So welcome. I'm Cheryl Wright. I am a demonstrator from Northeastern Montana with Stampin' Up! And tonight we're going to make some um, maybe Father's Day cards or um, masculine cards for birthdays or whatever else, whatever you want to use them for. We're going to focus on the gone fishing collection suite. I don't know what they called it. Anyway, I'll show it to you in a minute. Anyway, before we start that, let's get started. I'm going to show you a couple other things that are going on. And let me add my other camera. Flip these around. And there we go. I'm sorry for the delay. I really planned on being here at five, but I thought you'd rather probably watch a demonstration that was more put together and it's been a crazy day. I was at the doctor with uh, my son this morning unexpectedly, and everything's okay. He's just not recovering as quickly as we were hoping uh, from um, a bout with strep. I guess it's going around. And uh, then, um, uh, yeah, I had promised to watch my granddaughter this afternoon, and everything just kind of... So we're here, and we're on, and we're going to get started. So I have a paper share going on right now. I have three spots left, three spots left, unless we want to start another um, group. Hi, Deb. Thanks for letting me know who you are and for saying hello. I hope everyone else follows suit and says hello in the comments. You can give um, StreamYard permission to see your name. Otherwise, please just tell me who you are. Otherwise, I see Facebook user until I get back over to Facebook. So anyway, um, a paper share. You will get all the pieces of paper from all the designer series paper from let's see here i'll find it i'll find it i should just have this marked so when i find it i am going to mark it there we go paper okay so you'll get one six by six sheet of paper from all the papers through from 129 through 120, 130, 131, 132, and 133. There's actually two packs in this grouping and there's four packs in this grouping. Not these papers. We're not doing any of the specialty papers. So if it's a specialty, we're not. And then the um, Hello Irresistible, Irresistible Hello. Hello Irresistible, I think, is an online exclusive and we're going to do that. Hi, Sherry. Hi, Lisa. Wow. Full house tonight. Cool. So, um, that's the paper share. It is $60 and there's an option for a class. Um, if you do the little, if, if you buy the little dreamers add on, then I will do an exclusive class just with those people who have, and you'll get all the pieces to make those cute little cards. And let me show you, I guess I can show you where little dreamers is. Um, it will be easy to look up because I remembered the name. Sometimes that they name things just a little off. Um, Little Dreamers is on page 57. And it's this cute little set. I love this little calf. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and mark that so I can remember the next couple times I do it. So there you go. This has to, you have to order it, go to this link, and it'll give you the link to get to the paper share. And, um, it closes on the 24th, so next Wednesday. So there's that. And then I'll order the paper on Thursday and it will arrive and I'll cut it all up and ship it out to you. And again, if you go to the QR code there, uh, not the QR code, the link. I saw QR codes and my mind is faster than I am some days. <laughs> faster than my mouth? I don't know. Anyway, this is the new paper pumpkin kit. It's going to feature it's going to feature colors ish um, similar to the country in sweet. And then there's an extra add-on. You do have to paper be a paper pumpkin subs subscriber, excuse me, to get this add-on in there. It's a three die set and it's six six dollars. Um if you don't want to subscribe but you want a kit, just let me know. I would be happy to add to my total. So this is, don't forget, there are online exclusives. And this is the paper I was referring to either earlier, the Hello Irresistible. And everybody will get one sheet of that in the paper share and a new kit. And let's get going. 
So like I said, today we're focusing on, oops, that did not go where it was supposed to. We are focusing on the Gone Fishing. It is on page 79 in the catalog. Last week when I rewatched my video a little bit, there was a little bit of an echo. So if you ever hear that, please let me know. Is there an echo tonight? It was, yeah, it was like, oh no, that means I didn't get a setting set. Um, but anyway, the suite that we're going to talk about, it is a suite. Let's Go Fishing is the suite. The stamp set is Gone Fishing. Awesome. Thank you, Lisa. And then we're going to use the dies also um, for the suite. And then it comes with the paper. I'm not using the rope um, embossing folder, but I am using the rest of the suite today. And there you go. So if you'd like this class, um, the, I'll do three cards today. And if you'd like all the pieces and parts of this class, I can't do any stamping for you, but you can um, use the host code that's right here and um, go to stampinup.com and you type in that host code and place a 50, uh, excuse me, a $40 order and you'll get all the card kits. And if you place a $50 order, I will send you uh, the card kits for two of each of the cards that goes for the 40 or the $50 order. Um, but I will send you um, <sighs> the card kits, an embellishment, and a free tutorial bundle with 44, and 44 tutorials. And you need to order... Your order has to be um, by next next Wednesday. Wednesday's the day for the paper share and the last day for the gone fishing class. So let me show you what, what our cards are going to be. Let's go ahead and get started. So, hmm. We're going to start off with a relatively easy one. So this is Misty Moonlight, just a regular card base going the long way. This is from the paper. Um, the... Let's go fishing sweet. So there you go. There's some of the paper here. Uh, what's the back of that look like? Ooh, rope. That would have been fun. So there's the paper I'm using today. And then oh, I should have gone with that one, but nope, it's fine. I can make other cards later. And there I'm using this paper today too. So that is what is on tap for today. So this is, so this is 11 by what, four and a quarter. And there you go. And so this is four by five and a quarter. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put that down. Oh, I can't believe it's Thursday already. It just seems like it was the weekend. I think that's a good sign, but yesterday I was busy. I coordinate the blood drive in circle. So I was busy there all day there. And yeah, crazy, crazy. All right. I think that's lined up pretty good. Okay. So there's my water. And. I need this piece. I'm going to grab just, I don't really need this, but I'm going to use it as my, I'm going to use it. So I think this is where I want it to go. I don't think I want it to go this way. Maybe it works. Okay. So I'm on a stamp, but I only want to use, this is what I'm going to do right here. I'm going to use this stamp right here, but I don't want the weight. To me, that should have said good things come to those who wade and make a little pun for fishing. But I'm going to just use good things come to those who fish. So I'm going to get rid of the weight, the weight, excuse me. And I'm going to do that by using one of our Stampin' Right markers. This is the black one. You can order the black single. You don't have to get it in a bunch, a uh, package. The rest of them all come in packs. So I'm just going to use the brush tip end and I'm going to get this good and 
juicy because I don't want the whole stamp. I don't want the weight to show up. Okay. And if it does, we're going to chop it off. All right. So I have not colored on the bottom of my markers for a while with my markers. With Yeah. Um, it is another method to ink up your markers. If you want multicolors on your stamps, just grab the Stampin' Write markers. These brush tips are fantastic. There is another tip, and they just redesigned the tip, so it's better than it was before. But for inking up your stamps, this is the best way to go. And I'm actually going to do a practice run to make sure it's inking it's uh, going to stamp correctly so let me grab a scrap sheet good things come to those who and it looks like it's not doing real great on the things so i'm just going to um drag it across my paper maybe rub my finger across it a little bit yeah, now my finger's all black oh well it was bound to happen and that should make that clear up. Sometimes there's just a little bit of a film that they leave on it when they um, produce the stamps. So we're gonna go ahead and go back in and ink it up again. Make sure I get enough ink on there. I don't wanna have to do it again. But I wanna be careful. I don't wanna hit any part of that weight. Just make sure everything's inked up really well, nice and juicy. You can kind of see some light spots. All right, I'm gonna use this piece of, oh, what color is this one? Um, Boho blue, go that way. I think I wanna go with here. All right. Remember to have some kind of cushion underneath for your photopolymer stamps. I have this mat that's a cushion right here. So, um, but there's, we have paper piercing mats online that you can get, or you can get, this is a, a computer mouse pad is what I got. Um, or even this, I think might be enough give the silicone sheet. So that turned out perfect in my opinion. Okay, so I'm going to put that away. And I'm going to grab an old piece of twine. I just want this to look kind of, I don't know, rustic. Hi, Cheryl. How are you? No, I'm not talking to myself, everyone. I have a friend, Cheryl. She was one of my Disneyland buddies when we went to the Stampin' Up! conference. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and, oh, I'm just going to use, find, I'm just going to use some, ooh, this was the plus. The Stamp and Seal Plus has these little lines that you can kind of see. Um, it breaks off really easy. So, the other you have to lift up on. This one, I mean, you do too, but this one's stronger. I don't know if I needed that strong for my um, good things come to those who. And I am just going to kind of play with this piece of twine. It is no particular size or just kind of get it going um yeah well, i don't want it to look like it was planned there it wasn't planned okay now i'm going to go ahead and put some dimensions on the back dimensionals oh have you all had some of this smoke from canada I am doing well, Cheryl. 
um, except for the smoke that we got yesterday from Canada. It was horrible. Today, it's not so bad from their forest fires up there, but yesterday was absolutely horrible. Now, I think my, my letters are... This isn't the one I'm using. This is the one I cut it out of. So... Let's just go about there. Okay, so we got that done. Now, I did cut out, I put adhesive sheet on the back of a piece of our silver foil. And then I cut out the letters fish, as you can see. I have a little basket over here with all my pieces and parts today. And to me, it should should have said, good things come to those who fish. Or the good things come to those who wade. But good things come to those who wait. I don't know about that. Most of my people growing up were fly fishermen. So there was that constant 10 and 2. <laughs> oh, hopefully it does. There Apparently there's significantly enough fires up there. There's more fires there now in May than there has been in many, many. And it's up in Alberta and um, Alberta and British Columbia. And the wind was blowing just right yesterday for us to get it all. And uh, I don't know about all of it because I think it was, I heard people over in Minneapolis were having issues or over in the Minnesota area. And I know North Dakota had it too. So we still have it today, but not as bad. We, uh, it woke me up. I didn't know it was, we were expecting it. I woke up at four o'clock in the morning and I could just smell something burning. And I was like, <gasps> panic mode because, you know, that's not how you want to wake up in the night. Because of course it was so nice that day before and we had all the windows open and it was just such a gorgeous night for sleeping until the smoke rolled in and we were all gasping for air. I think I should have centered my fish a little bit more. Oh, well, it will be fine. So this, these adhesive sheets are fantastic for this fine details because it puts adhesive on the back of them. So yeah, I didn't center. My, my fish is not centered very well at all. I don't know if I can move it or not. Maybe I'll try before I put the F down. Oh, it's going to work. Yeah, sometimes when you eyeball it, your eyeballs are a little off. Right? Okay. Oh, that could go down. I should have lined this up on a ruler. I know better. Ooh, getting lucky so far. I hope the H comes up too, just as easily. Good things come to those who fish. And then the next step, which is the last step for this card actually, is the fish. So what I did, is I took this paper, and as you can see, I cut a bunch of the fish out of this paper. So we're going to put fish on here. I thought this would make a great Father's Day, um, birthday, whatever you want to put on the inside. I'm not going to put anything on the inside right now because I don't know exactly what I want to use this card for. Oh, well, there's a loop there. So then since this is water, I can just add my fish and I didn't know which fish I wanted to use but that one was a half a fish and I thought well he could look like he's coming in from the outside and this is a little guy of course that one's going his own way go your own way there and this guy um oh, that's this one's going the other way too so there are the fish for these this card I wish I could fix that loop. Oh, 
Let's see if we can. Now that I can see where it's coming from. But I used that really good adhesive, right? Oh, nope, I'm not getting that loop. Oh, well. Oh, fiddle. Okay. This is this loop. This is this loop. <laughs> oh, there we go. And we'll just have this come here. Ooh, they're extra sticky. And... There. Now it's crooked. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, there you go. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a little glue on the back of these. And this card is done. Thank you. Um, do we want a brown one of these or bluish? I'll use bluish. Well, maybe we'll use the brown one. There's a die for these, but there is not a die for the others in the set. So I had to, I had to fussy cut those. For those of you out there who don't know what fussy cut is, it means I had to use the scissors. One of my friends was like, what's fussy cut? And I was like, oh my gosh, apparently I didn't do my educating very well on that one. I'm just gonna flip this one over and put on it every time i there we go. So this is my own creation and I had to do something when I decided that good things come to those who fish was a better option than wait. Like I said, birthday, and you could add more fish or more details. This guy's coming in from the side. So there is card number one. Things come to those who fish. And I think it's a little crooked, but that's because I was being picky. So there's card number one of the class this week. And you will get all those pieces except for the stamping from this. I will cut letters out for you. Um, you just won't get the stamping because I cannot stamp for you per Stampin' Up's guidelines. But I'll give you the paper and all that with a $40 order. You'll get two sets of that. So I've got letter pieces all over. Okay, next card is, um, actually I'm not gonna do the next card quite yet. I am going to do some stamping because the next two, eh, this will work. Um, the next two cards, I need some things. <laughs> some, um, I have some lures cut, but I have, so I need some, I need some pieces. So we're just going to do a bunch of pieces and then we'll put the next two cards together. So I need a bobber. Oh, FYI, I think this is going to make a, excellent Christmas ornament stamp for the holidays. So see, dual purpose. You get the fishing set and you get an ornament too. Right now we know it's a bobber though. All right, so I need that and I need, I don't need this paper in the road. I'm gonna put this little half moon on there. I'll do a couple of those. So I need my red. I did not get my colors out ahead of time because I knew I would be using blocks. Okay. So. All right. And there are dies for these to cut out, so I don't have to cut these out. Yay! I love dies and punches. We're gonna do a third one just, 
just in case because they were they were stamping well. And then of course the bottom of the bobber is red. I think I got the right red. Maybe it's hmm, I don't know if I like this red. I think I might want to go with more of a poppy parade. Yeah, it's out. We're gonna use it. Okay. See, this would make a bottom of a pretty ornament too. Okay, so I got that stamped. And we're gonna get um do a silver lure. Or oh, I don't know what color. This is maybe, yeah, this is a lure. I don't know all my lure types. No, Cheryl, I have not done my swaps. That is a project for this weekend. For those of you who do not know what a swap is, it's when several people in a group, these happen to be my stamp and demonstrator friends in Washington. Oh, actually not just Washington. They're based out of Washington, but um, we are all over the country. Anyway, we all make several of the same card and then we send them to our friend Erin and she divides them up into piles and gives everybody their share of one of everybody else's and then she sends them back to us. So what color should we make this? Do we have a fluorescent the orange? Hmm. Well, we did. I don't even have an idea for it yet, Cheryl. So I'm still processing ideas, but my goal is not to wait till the last minute. Ha ha ha. Okay, this is gonna be two steps. What color should I put in there? I don't wanna put red again. Um, how about a bright green? Would that work? Lemon lime twist, that would catch the... That would catch. The. Eye of the fish. Uh oh, now they have fallen. <laughs> I have my stamps in a bag next to me. And it's a very convenient bag when I want to go stamping somewhere else. I just grab my bag. But when I'm looking. Sometimes it's not so convenient. What color is this? Parakeet party wasn't what I was looking for, but I'm not finding lemon lime twist. Uh, why is it the one that you always want that you want is always the one that goes rogue on you? It's not going to be lemon lime twist. Pretty sure. Maybe. Oh, maybe I didn't get lemon lime twist out of the shelf yet. I'll be back. separated out but I forgot to grab them the new ones okay we're gonna use lemon lime twist I haven't used it yet since it's come back from being retired Ooh. could be juicier maybe I need to find my reinker we will be fine Okay, and then we'll have to make some flies. We do know about those because my family does those. I should just dump all of them out. So now they're all backwards.
told you. It's the last one you look for. I'm looking for Pebbled Path. Yeah. On the bottom. Oh, that's great granite. Great granite would have worked. Oh well. Okay. And I want it for this one. I need a block. I have all the pieces cut for these, so. Um, a fun fold would be fantastic, Cheryl. I think a fun fold would be awesome. You can see I should have done some of these ahead of time, but it is fine. So I think this will fit on here to add a little color. And I'm gonna grab something that looks like it might catch the eye of my nephew always uses like yellows and oranges and stuff when he ties his own flies. So we're going to add this in here. This is just some two step stamping and I'm off the camera. Sorry about that. And now I have a black thumb and a yellow finger. All right, so there's that. And there's some other fishing lures. I think, I think this might, this might be what we need. Oh, there's one there. And we'll do a couple more. I should leave this one out. And yeah, there's a lot of pieces. I'm not going to use all these. I know. There, I'm going to do one more set. Okay. And I'm just going to use the great granite again. Or not the great, the pebbled path, excuse me. And then this can be. I don't know what color this would be. Cajun craze? Sure. I know. I'm going to be told later, you used the wrong color on the fish and stuff. It's like, eh, I did my best. All right. So that is... Done. Besides words, we're done stamping. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my mini machine. And this little blue mini is available for customers if you're interested. They usually only have the white, but for a limited time, they do have the blue. So... Okay, my bag is backwards, so everything's turned around. They're small enough that they keep, they go in a pocket pretty easily. So, it gives you the recipes as to what plate sandwiches to use. One, four, and if it doesn't go through, just adjust some plates until you get the right sandwich. I don't need any die cutting. So that's this one, and we're going to set those aside unless we need them. I was very stressed about these a couple times, and I realize now that it was me and not necessarily a machine, because I was thinking it was supposed to be different than it was. It wasn't. So we're gonna put that there. Who was it that said they they always just wing it? They don't ever put the oh no, I can't find it. They don't ever put the tape on. 
when they're live and I'm like, oh, actually I always put the tape on when I'm live. Okay, this goes on this one. All right, I'm gonna set that aside. But maybe I won't today. Are you feeling lucky? I don't know if I'm feeling lucky or not. So we'll try it. No, oh, it already moved. So you can use a post-it note tape, post-it note, piece of washi tape, whatever you want, whatever you want to use. That keeps your dies in place. Ugh. Well, this is the long part. If you're on replay, you can fast forward through this part. <laughs> if you're live, thanks for sticking it out with me. Okay. All right. Now I need to get it just right. And it doesn't like this mat. Okay. So if that doesn't work, then I switch it out and I put the gray plate in and see if that. I think sometimes the dyes are different. Um, thicknesses sometimes. So I just have learned that if one plate doesn't work, you try the other plate. And that was just a perfect example right there of it. So, but this is lightweight and my die did move, but it'll be fine. Um, it's lightweight. It's very portable. It's half the cost of the big machine. You can't use all the dies in it though, but, um, you can use most of them. Okay. I'm just going to move this over and you saw how fast that was once I got it going. And now we know what plate works best with this particular set of dies maybe. All right. I'm just lining up the dies. Don't forget I, if you joined us late, I have a paper share offer. You need to order by next week, next Wednesday. And to get this class, you need to order, place a $40 or $50 order, depending on what you're hoping for. Oh, I did that backwards. Gosh. I need to breathe. All right. I see demonstrators all the time just whip through these. It's like, okay, I'm going to do it. I should do my fishing card, Cheryl, that one that I first, if I could get all the, if I could cut all the fish out. That was a fun card. Good things come to those who fish. Two of those that didn't turn out real great. But, okay, we've got two cards and we're going to do those two. And so then we're going to do two bobbers and we're just going to see if we need anything else besides those. Okay, so I've got, I'm going to put all my dies over there. And we're going to do a couple bobbers. Oh, I was going to do with this other thing too. I can do that here. Gets just to be white. Oh. Yeah, anyway, if you're interested in the paper share or this fishing class, next Wednesday's the deadline. If you are a part of um, if you do the class, for $40 order, you'll get two card kits to make two of these with all the pieces cut for you. But no stamping. I can't do stamping. And uh, if you want 
an embellishment and it's a $50 order and a, you get a free tutorial kit. I participated in a tutorial bundle thing. So with a $50 purchase, you get that. If you're on my team, you get it for free. I haven't given it to my team yet. Sorry, I just hit the camera. But they are getting it. This is my weekend to play catch up. Last weekend, I was gone all weekend. My daughter graduated from college. So we were gone most of the weekend to her graduation. So I have to crank two more times. I need a piece of red. And then I am done. Done cranking. And we're just gonna use this red because it does not matter what color red. I should be putting adhesive sheet on some of this, but we're not going to. I'm trying to get away with only one allergy pill today with those fires, but I don't know. I might need another allergy pill at the rate I'm going. I'm just allergic to air. You know, icky air, polluted air. Oh, thank you. She she graduated at the top of her class with honors and was voted student teacher of the semester. And oh, she really she really showed her brothers up good. <laughs> uh, and she's already got a teaching job, so that's cool. She's following in my footsteps. She's going to be a second grade teacher. I was a second grade teacher for twenty six years, and then after that, I retired. But then they kept calling me back to do other teaching. So I taught on and off for another six years after that. This year they haven't called me a lot though. So yeah. Okay. I think we're ready just to assemble. So we're going to do this one first. This one is in the catalog. Let me get this one. I have, I'm, I don't have my catalog up. Um, but this one's kind of in the catalog. I didn't do it exactly. But, you know. So I, I'm using um, Pebbled Path. And they had a piece of designer series paper underneath it. But I don't see that there's really all that much room. So I'm not putting it on. Oh, here comes the sun. We're going to be battling the sun now. Okay. So this is going to go here. This is going to go here. And this isn't perfect. This isn't exactly like the catalog, but it's going to be close. I can see maybe why they did it, but it'll be fine. Okay. So we're going to glue this down. You know what? I, maybe I should have used blue dot, or maybe I should have used some of these. Aha! Maybe I'll not put that down with that glue. I'm gonna use some of these strips and pop it up a little. Give it a little dimension. Maybe not. I know. I'm changing my mind halfway through. All right. Yes, there's glue in there, but it'll be fine. It will be fine. I grew up with fishermen, but my husband does not fish. So I don't have a fisherman in my life right now. My, my nephews and my brother-in-law. Oh, I don't know if my brother-in-law fishes. My one brother-in-law does on my dad on, on my husband's side, but this is what you do when you put the glue on, but then you decide to do adhesive instead. Or, yeah. That'll make it pop a little bit. Give it a little shadow underneath it. Okay. And you can get these adhesive strips. Pretty sure you can. Well, maybe I should have. Okay.
If not, you can get the big chunks of adhesive sheets and you can chop them up at, as you want. So this is actually going to mimic a tackle box. That's why I chose this because I know there's a lot of people that have gray tackle boxes. Okay, I think I got all my paper up with this one. Okay, so now we're going to put this down on our card base. That gives us that gives it a little pop. There we go. There. Oh, I'm glad I did that. So then this, we're just going to use the, the glue. The glue. And I could have used, like I said, I could have used an adhesive sheet on this. And it might have worked a little better, but that's a big adhesive piece of adhesive sheet just for this. So I'm just going to smear the glue around. It will be fine. There we go. Anybody have any big plans for this weekend? This weekend we are playing catch up. We are catching up on farming because of the rain and the snow. I am catching up on maybe my swaps. All right, I'm gonna have a shiny spot right there. So you use those. And I should have done something else differently, but I know what I'll do. I have things falling behind me. I think that's called a craft -a lamp crafter. Craft a lunch. Okay. I'll have to get the glue pieces. It's on your wish list. Well, I hopefully I will encourage you instead of discourage you. <laughs> okay. So now we're just going to add some parts. We have, I can put a lure there. That one didn't cut out very good. So we'll use this one and a bobber. And I think these are called spinners. Not that one. That one's called a fly. A spinner. And then, oh, I have those metal lures that I told you I did. So I did do some of it ahead of time. The last card will be worth it, I promise. Hang in there with me. But I did spinners and then I have some hooks so this, this can go here and oh some weights so we give them where we want them And I think Wink Estella might be definite, a definite must with this. Because they're supposed to be shiny, right? To catch all the good stuff. That one's off, but it'll be fine. And then a fly, and then that. And then we're going to put words here. And we can put, put a hook on the bottom of this. Okay, and we need words. So what I'm going to use for the words is one of these panels, since I forgot to stamp before I put it. I'm going to find the one that fits in there. And we're going to stamp on that. And we will stamp. <laughs> um, happy retirement, because I don't have anybody to send a... Father's Day card too, but I could, yeah, we'll do it. We'll do Happy Father's Day. It fits in the square a little better. All right, I could emboss this in white. That's what it did on in the on the online one, but I'm not going to get out my embossing stuff today. Not for now, because I don't want to keep you a lot longer. I still have another card to do. Ugh. Okay, let's 
stamp this. So where's my scrap paper? Works good. Hey, that's a pretty Father's Day. I didn't see that we had a nice Mother's Day one. I might have to dig out. Look harder next time. All right, oh, there's a hair. Oh, it's behind the block. An invasion. Okay. Oh, that's not very centered. We're going to try it again on this side. Okay. It's about the exact size of this block. That's better. Okay. So, I'm going to take this and we're going to glue it in. I used to mention this. We'll pop this. Sorry, apparently I'm not talking. <laughs> I should be talking more not less. So there's that. That one's kind of popped up. And my lighting doesn't seem to be as dark to, uh, as bright. I don't know what's going on. Oh. Okay. And like I said, I did adhesive sheet on some of these that I didn't have to stamp. And this, I would never have gotten glue on that. So that's why I did the adhesive sheet on this one. I couldn't find the silver um, paper in the catalog. I'm probably just missing it, but I did, it is on the website. So maybe it's an online exclusive. I don't know. I'm just gonna pop that up, put that there. And put a couple weights in here. Ugh. And we can put the bobber on. That was my kind of fishing when you just watch and uh, wait for the bobber to go down. Although I do like fly fishing too. I haven't done it in many, many years. Many, many years. And actually I don't, I don't like the fish, so. I like some seafood, but I'm not a big trout lover or anything. We do have walleye around here and I do like walleye. I like the milder fish. I don't like the ones that actually taste fishy. Right. I'm gonna go back to some of these strips. They work really good on the fish or on the lures. So this is kind of a popped up card. Maybe I should I'll have to hand deliver this. I won't mail. Okay. It should have popped up the frame, but it'll be fine. This just, if you just chop them up, they work just perfect. So, kind of a boring card, but it's got some color on it. And then we can put some Wink of Stella on there. Um, let's see here. I have one Wink of Stella that's dead and one that's really dead. It should be coming back in stock soon. I hope. No guarantees. I don't know that the fly needs. So there is a card for that. Oh, we'll put another put another weight in there. Maybe we'll put it in a different box. Some of my weights did not get. <laughs> and 
adhesive sheet on the back. It was kind of one of those, after I did it, I was like, oh, I should put adhesive sheet on it. So there's card number two. So you'll get two kits to make this one and two kits to make this one. And then this next one is probably my favorite, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But let me clear off some space. I think I have all the pieces ready for it. So um, I do need a dauber. Do I have a dauber? I use a dauber. Cool. All right. I think we're ready. So I, and I even got the ink out because I knew what color ink I needed for this one. So this is a five and a half by eight. And then I scored it at two and six. And these are the first or the two smallest from the new country in. Okay, so that's how we're doing that. And then I measured, there's measuring in this one. If you don't like measuring, this might not be your card. So we're going to fold this over. And then I'll tell you how I measured so you can see these lines a little bit better. You see where I'm going with this yet? Okay. So I measured a half, in, a half inch here and a half inch here, half inch from here to here and a half inch from here to here. And we're going to cut those. Same thing over here. Up here, I measured an inch and a half down and an inch over. And I did that the same thing over here. So we're going to make a fishing vest. Oh, it's really fun. Except for your if fly fishing is really fun, Cheryl. If um, I think it's, it's easier to do on the bank. The last time I did some fly fishing, we were in a boat and the boat moving and me trying out, oh, it was comical to say the least. So this one is the easiest because do you see my little pencil marks? So that's where I'm just going to go pencil mark to pencil mark. And then same thing over here, pencil mark to pencil mark. And then this one, I'm actually going to close it and do pencil mark to pencil mark. Same thing. Kind of got buried. I have to look at it from this way. There we go. Pencil mark to pencil mark. So there we have that. Now we're going to, I'm going to. Um, as soon as I saw this stamp set, I knew I had to do this card and I need my trimmer and I need to get rid of that. So now I'm going to score. This went down a half inch. This went over an inch. I'm going to score between the marks. So I'm going to line that up in the tray here and this up in the tray so that both the pencil marks are in the score line. And do that. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Line those up. And this color is wild wheat, by the way. All right. Now I'm going to cut these in half. I could eyeball it, but I'm not going to. So it's not quite three, so it doesn't matter if they're perfect. We'll do one and three eighths. And then I'll turn it around and do one and three eighths. That way they're the same size. So those are those two. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. How long is it? This is two and three eighths. So we'll just do an inch. Oh, but I don't want to cut the, the end off there. Okay, so if you order this kit, I will send you two of these um, already made, already measured and everything. Okay, here goes. So then we already scored that. I'm going to put a dimensional here. Actually, I'm going to score it. I'm going to flip it back. 
There we go. And I'm not going to use a dimensional quite yet. I'm jumping ahead. I'm so excited about this card. I love it. Okay. So that's going to go back like that, but we're going to make it, we're going to just add some detail. So we're going to take the dauber and I need a piece of paper. Do I have one? Oh, sometimes I usually chop them in half. This one, I did not chop in half. So that's good. So we're just going to take some same color. There's that hair. Um, and we're just going to kind of rough up, not rough up. Oh, I don't even need to do the inside. That's all right. It's done on the inside. This one needs to be done on the, the top corner needs to be done on the inside. So just kind of giving it some dimension. All right, now we need it on this side. The blending brush might work well on this too. I just thought I'd grab a dauber. I haven't used a dauber for a while. I thought about embossing it, but I didn't find an embossing folder that we had that I thought would be what I wanted it to be. Okay, now we're gonna do this. And then get this edge. You know, fishermen are not real neat looking characters. If it kind of looks. I'm gonna do this edge a little bit. I was kind of looking for that duck colored canvas and the wild weed. Now this finger is just getting colored to the max today. And the wild wheat was the one that I came up with that looked more like that. Is it, can I call it duck fabric or I don't know, canvas? You know, what the fishing vests are made out of. So there we go. I add a little here, a little darker. Okay. Oh, I'm not done. I need to do the same thing around this. Thought about leaving this hole, but I wanted to get the top part of the pocket too. These are the pockets for the vest, in case you have not figured that out. One more. All right, we are done with that. Gosh, now I've got to clean up. <laughs> this is why I wear dark pants when I'm stamping. It's because I usually end up getting it everywhere. Especially when I'm trying to hurry not to keep everyone. There you go. All right, so now we have the pockets. Hopefully we don't have a whole lot of fingerprints in them. All right. Now I'm gonna put that dimensional on there. So I don't want it to lay flat. How many fishermen do you know that are that neat that their vest would be flat? Usually tousled after being shoved in the back of the pickup until they get there. there. Okay. This pocket's going to go down here. This pocket's going to go down here. Like that. I'm going to use some tear and tape. And I'm going to... I love to do this. Make it skinnier. So just take the tear and tape and then cut it vertically. Ah, it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. And then just drape it around 
the edge because we want stuff to fit in the pockets. Because what fisherman doesn't have lures and stuff in their pockets? Do you see why we made extras? That's why. There we go. There's one pocket. And a second pocket. So that was like a two and a half inch strip long if I'm eyeballing it. And this isn't going to be accurate size wise. The lures are going to be much bigger than the pocket, of course, but it'll work. It'll give the message that you're giving your fisherman something. This one I think might be my happy retirement card. I need to make some cards for um, our cabin. My sister and I have a cabin. Um, we use it, we rent it out on Airbnb. And uh, we like to leave little cards welcoming them to the cabin. So, and most of them come for fishing. So I'm going to try to whip up some fishing cards. That was one of the ideas I had when I saw this set. I had talked to her about it ahead of time. She runs it. I, It's about 500 miles away from my house. So my sister runs it, takes care of all of it. Thank goodness. Okay, so now we're going to use some of these extra little lurey pieces. So one of these that doesn't have adhesive on the back. So we'll tuck that in there. <laughs> Cute. It's darker, so it, it doesn't show up on things quite as easily. And these we might just put up there. We're going to wait and see what we get. Okay. Bobber. There we go. And, oh, I didn't use these. I forgot to use those. Oh, we might add another one onto that other card. Um, these go like this. It's pretty easy. Oh, and that's what that stick was for. Okay, we're going to add that, but we'll do that another time. When you see it in the picture, you'll go, oh, that's what she did. All right, what do we have that we can put this? Maybe we'll put this up here. You know what? We're going to cut it in half. And then we're going to use... this. So there's a lure hanging out of the pocket. And then we use this again, just because it's handy. And I'm going to put the pocket right there. See, isn't this cute? Let me put the fly in there. Okay, here's another pocket. We'll have a hook coming out of this one. I've got hooks. You can have a hook and a weight coming out of this one. Okay. This pocket is going to go right there. So we'll have a hook there and we'll have a weight <laughs> I, you guys can't see this very well can you i'm sorry let me see if i can lower my camera down is that better there okay so now we need to add adhesive here and i'm going to tuck this under i need I need to line it up. There's a hook hanging out. And we'll use a little drop of glue. Got more than I bargained for there. That's why that glue was 
a love hate relationship with the glue, the runny glue. It's right now it's going everywhere it shouldn't be. Okay, there's that. All right, I'll put another lure in here. Tack those down. Add this one in here. That's why I didn't said that one didn't matter because I'll just tuck that end in. And do this. So there you have that one. I think I'm just gonna take now that I have them kind of where I want them. I will pick this up, add a glue, pick this up, add a glue. Add a dollop of glue. And this one. There. Okay. So there is that one. And I, so like I said, this is going to be a retirement card. So I'm just going to open it up. This color is very easy to see on. So isn't that a fun card? Oh, my cabin is, oh, let me see here. Our cabin is in Western Montana. I am originally from Butte, so it's over in that area. Yes. Okay, so where's our happy retirement? And I don't think it needs a sentiment on the front. I think it's got enough going on. So I need a block. Is this block going to be big enough? <laughs> My desk looks <laughs> like a hurricane in it. But that actually was a fishing trip. Thank you. Thank you for liking the cards. Oh, I forget my stand is not far up. So there's the card. Yeah, I moved it down so you could see it better because these colors aren't as easy to see on them, I'm, I'm thinking. All right, so this is the last of the cards. And you will get three of each of the kits if you'd like the card class from me. You'll get to make three of the kits. Three, uh, you'll get two of each card, card stock pieces for each card. So you get two for this and two for the other ones. So there you have it. I'm going to do one more thing to this card. I'm going to, since I have a little down there, I'm going to add a little. Just when they open it, they kind of sort of match. I'm all about matching. Matchy, matchy. It's my thing. So this is card number three. I'm going to move. I'm going to bump you for here. You know what? I'm going to take you off for a minute. And I'm going to move this up. My camera does not move easily. <laughs> I don't want you to get seasick. Okay, now I'll add it back. Flip it around, and here comes the sun. So I'm gonna move me, kinda. You just get to see a starbursty me, or a sunny me. So this is card number three. Here's card number two. I need to burnish this down a little bit better. It's not going down very easily. Card number three, card number two, and card number one. So if you'd like to make these cards, and it's still, my camera is just wonky as I'll get out. Ah, there. If you'd like to make these cards, um, if you want the kits, I would send them to you with a $40 order. There you have it. So you'd get two for this, two of this, and two of this at stampinup.com and then use that 
host code and it'll get you right to the right place. Thank you, Cheryl. And um, this is the class for the week. I've been doing one class a week. The Daisy class ended yesterday and the fishing class started today. So, and it you'll get them just in time to get them done for Father's Day. So, oh, I have a mess and a half. Don't forget the paper share. And I am, whoa, I don't know how to get rid of the, <laughs> the sun. There, maybe that's it. Oh, I can do that. Okay. Here, I'm going to turn you back around. I'm just going to put my hand up here so you can see me and not everything else. So have a great night. Thanks for watching. Thanks for crafting with me. And have a great weekend, everyone. Bye.